Well, this is a wonderful opportunity for people in our movement, like minds, to get together, share ideas, uh, enjoy fellowship together, and talk about what's going on in the world around us now and what we can do about a, a pr improving circumstances for the future of America and the world. Because right now, we are at a critical time, a very dangerous time, and we really need to work together and come together, and this is a perfect opportunity to do one of that, that kind of thing. Have you spoken at one of their events before? I spoke at the AFA uh, annual last conference summer. last summer in August. Yes, I did. Spoke about refugee resettlement, the true nature, the true dimensions of that program, and how thoroughly it's been misrepresented in the press and the public eye. It's very important for people to understand that it's very thoroughly misrepresented. Mm -hmm. What would Hillary Clinton have done as president in terms of bringing refugees into the country? Well, what she said she was going to do was, for one thing, increase um, Syrian refugee resettlement to 500,000. She said... Per year? Per, well, or no. In the first year? In the first... Well, the target as it stood was to bring in uh, 10,000 in 2016 and another somewhere, it was never really defined, but another 40 to 60,000 in 2017. And uh, Didn't Obama she, bring in more than 10,000 in 2016? He brought in about 15,000. Yeah. Well, well, actually, all told, since 2012 is a total of about 15,000. But here's another aspect of it that nobody understands. There were 100,000 Syrian refugees from 2012 to the present already here under different programs, but they weren't called refugees. Many of them were non-immigrant programs like visitor visas, student visas, and other kinds of programs that people just don't know about. And those people <clears throat> were fleeing Syrian violence every bit as much as the people who have gone through the refugee process are, they just weren't called refugees. There's something else called temporary protected status, where between five and 8,000 Syrians who came here under different circumstances are allowed to stay because under temporary protected status, anybody from a country named under that program can stay indefinitely as though they were a legal permanent resident. Through the streets of Beverly Hills and I dare say Irvine, there are sports cars, Maseratis and Lamborghinis, blaring their uh, <coughs> engines, loud street drag racing, mm. um, and, and they're invariably Arab drivers, <laughs> Arab kids. <laughs> Well, is that included in this, these kinds of statistics, or are, are the students who come here separate? Well, I think uh, a lot of Arab students come here, well, I think pretty much all of the Arab students come here come from wealthy uh, Arab families, a lot of Saudi families with a lot of Saudi money. And so for them, I would say, yes, that's a result of, uh, you know, Saudi or other Middle Eastern, uh, Kuwaiti or UAI or UAE rather uh, countries who are sending their young to be educated in the United States and they bring a lot of money with them and their parents spend a lot of money to influence the way things are taught in colleges. And they also bring a lot of money to help build mosques in the United States and many of those mosques are being led by very radical is um, imams. So it's something of concern, should be concerned to all of us. There was a, a report today that the Trump family in Saudi Arabia for the weekend, um, and it, you saw the way that they um, welcomed him with, with a grand welcome, uh, that, that the Saudis donated 10 times more, well, between four and 10 times more to Ivanka's uh, women's entrepreneurial uh, charity then to the Clinton Foundation that, that the Saudis pledged a hundred million dollars to Ivanka during a trip to, uh, under which his, her father negotiated a hundred billion dollar military deal, military supplies deal. Do you think that the Trumps are, are beyond what they promised in, in their campaign or are they also susceptible to bribery? Well, I don't know if I want to use the term bribery, but yes, that's those are things that concern me greatly. That. Uh, President Trump's daughter and 
his son-in-law uh, have been involved with those kind of negotiations because I don't think, frankly, that they're up to the task. And I think that uh, whether it's perception or reality that Trump shouldn't be allowing his, his daughter or his son-in-law to be getting involved and getting engaged in those things where we know the Saudis do everything they can to try to buy influence. I mean, the Saudis and many other leaders of, uh, of other Middle Eastern nations, as we know, spent a lot of money gave a lot of money to the Clinton Foundation, gave a lot of money to Bill Clinton and to his wife for speaking engagements that were off the charts in terms of what they were paid so that they could influence U.S. policy in their favor. So we know that they do that. And uh, if that's what uh, the Trump family is doing, that, that's, that should be of concern.